Hey everyone and welcome to Backseat Sports. I'm Josh and that is Caleb and guys we have won back to back games but we got ourselves a challenge this week. Ohio State, we are going to Columbus to play Ohio State in the horseshoe. Nebraska versus Ohio State in the morning on Saturday. It's poised to be an interesting one to say the least. Ohio State's coming off a bye week and coming off a loss to Purdue the week before. So, I mean, Ohio State's trying not to lose back-to-back -back games for the first time in a long time in the regular season, especially in the Big Ten. And, man, it's going to be an interesting one. Yes, Ohio State hasn't lost back-to-back -back games since 2013, and that was in the postseason, the Big Ten Championship, and then the Orange Bowl. Haven't lost back-to-back -back games since 2011, and that is pre-Urban Meyer. So Urban Meyer himself, in the regular season, has not lost back-to-back -back games at Ohio State. So to say the least, this is an uphill battle. Yeah. And then even more so, it's off a of bye week, which... They have a week to plan yeah. and prepare for Nebraska. So, and let's just, and Urban Meyer does not like to lose. So, no, no, not, not at all. I think he's, he might be allergic to it. He's pretty yeah. good at, at the football. Right. Um, so, yeah, we have a lot to deal with. The stair step of talent that we're facing from Bethune Cookman to Ohio State, there might not be a larger chasm, to be honest. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know if any teams ever face a skill gap from one week to another. Like we might have just faced with the through cookman. Yeah, State. except for like, you know, maybe Alabama when they throw in like. Yeah. Sisters oh, yeah. Of the Mary. Like yeah. Western Alabama. Yeah, they... <laughs> Western Alabama Tech yes. A&M. Yeah. Yeah. The positive things we can take away from the Bethune Cookman game is. We didn't play a lot. Our starters were pulled after halftime, which was great. Yeah. We, About we, how we kind of saw it going. Yeah, exactly. Know. It's kind of hard not to predict that. Yeah. Got those guys off the field. Saw a lot of good things. I think the best was J.D. Spielman's uh, punt return. That was super exciting. So, oh, so nice. That was Ooh. that was probably the highlight of the Ooh. game in my eyes. Um, it was. Oh, Zigbo had you know another some nice runs. My Washington had some nice runs. Nice passes. It's it was pretty easy. Um, the skill. It was nice to see some of the yes. backups for sure too. I mean, we haven't seen we haven't seen a lot of the backups this year, yes. um, besides in the Michigan game. Even that we played our starters basically the end. So it's like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was good to see some of the fresh faces and some of those freshmen who I think we're going to see a lot of next season. And I saw some good things defensively, especially I thought that were, uh, you know, positives for sure. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, and getting to see some, you know, those fifth year se seniors like Matt Jarzicka and stuff get a sack and uh, Newell get a get a pick, stuff like that. That was that was nice to see warms the Nebraskans hearts, get to see some guys who for sure haven't really been able to see the field, um, but have stuck with the program and kept around fighting and to, to see some dividends paid out is, is nice yeah. for, them, for sure. They got a smile. And before we head into Ohio state for this week's game, obviously we don't want to spend too much time on Bethune Cookman. Yeah, I'd say that. That was a bad There wasn't for me. too much to take away. No. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. I mean, again, first, I think we might want to talk about Ohio state and what we can expect from Ohio state off the rip. I mean, the loss to Purdue two weeks ago was an anomaly. Nobody saw it coming. I mean, they lost 49-20, to and they were favored by over 13 points headed into the game against Purdue in Purdue. And so it, it was just a, I mean, a shocking loss, absolutely shocking. And a lot had to go wrong for Ohio State. And, I mean, Urban Meyer seemed absolutely perplexed and didn't really have a good, a great reason for why Ohio State lost to Purdue. Um, and yeah. it just seemed like there was a lot of small mistakes piled up to a, uh, an amountable deficit on the road. And it kind of felt like Ohio State just couldn't get back on track after they got down early. Yeah, I think Desmond Howard was talking about how um, he had kind of seen this Ohio State team being weaker this whole time. And that it was just some mistakes that have just piled up. You know, the lack of them being able to run, having to throw the ball so many times and leaning so much in on Haskins. Um, and stuff like that, their they're secondary being a little bit on the weaker side. Um, a lot of that things just kind of piled up for, for Ohio State. And also, um, you know, Kirk Herbstreit had talked about, too, the lack of leadership in the locker room kind of after uh, Bosa um, left. And with all yeah. the, with the controversy of Urban Meyer, there was just a lot of baggage. In the press conference, Urban this week said that uh, their leadership hasn't always been in the best spots this season. And yeah. he said that it's, it's been a point they've been working on and putting a lot of effort to build this season. So, I mean, he kind of admitted it without admitting it that, you know, that the leadership hasn't been exactly what they hoped for so far this year. Yeah, and th I mean, that's going to be really the big, I think, factor for me is, you know, if if when you lose a game and with Ohio State, they have the same goal every year, and that's national championship with Urban Meyer. Go undefeated, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, and then you ha you take a big loss like that to Purdue, which an embarrassing loss. 
Um, not just a For close sure. game, but you know no. you can't score the ball against Purdue, who does not have a good defense whatsoever. Um, you know, and and you get nervous that hey, if we make one more mistake, we're not going to get in the playoff, college football playoff. Yeah. So um, there's no room for error, and and for <laughs> for them, you know, they can either respond as we've seen Urban Meyer's teams before just come out gung ho. Their players, you know, they step up and turn up to that next level, which we see kind of it, it does take that loss almost for urban meyer's team even with tim tebow he they lost the game and then became a, you know the giant killers that they were it seems with the ohio state's team they almost have to they have to lose that talent has to lose for them to play to their potential and um i mean that's that's been the story the past like i mean really since urban meyer took over at ohio state for the most part is that they they blow one game in the year and then they dominate the rest of the year which is a you know that might that, that's kind of the problem for Nebraska right now is that we were hoping that we could be that game that Ohio State blew, yeah, blows. But, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But right now, I mean, Purdue took that took that title already. So Nebraska's looking to do something that hasn't been done in a long time. Urban Meyer was emphasizing urgency that now you know there's an urgency in the team that we need to win now and we need to put forth our best foot, firing on all cylinders at the start of this game. And I mean, that was one thing that Scott Frost talked about really, even at the, in his press conference was that he expects Ohio State to come out really hot and come, come out with a lot of energy early. And we got to be able to take those blows and, and, you know, run with, run with Ohio State at the beginning of the game. And that's going to be extremely important. Uh, it's just, I mean, that's been a constant problem with Nebraska in big games. We've seen it even this year against Michigan's that we start off rough. We started, we saw it last year and the year before against Ohio State. We start off real slow and we 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 are, we're down by 21 in the first quarter, you know. And man, that just you just if you want to have any chance in the game, that's just that's the way to to get blown out. And yeah, just mistakes early is what's been causing that. And so if we can play a clean game early, that's going to be the most important key. Moving forward for Nebraska in this game is play a clean game early. I mean, I think for for the Nebraska Cornhuskers to have success is we're going to have to be able to match that level of intensity, which is no easy feat. Um, yeah, but you sure. know, we're playing for our lives too. Um, obviously, with these past two wins, we'd have to win out for a bowl game. We have to play with our backs against the wall as well, um, wanting to what? win every game we can. You know, not saying that yeah. that's that bowl game is even our our main goal, but right. but I'm saying and if, if you want a chance, you're going to have to match what Ohio State's feeling. Right, no, for sure. And I think that intensity comes from believing that you can actually beat Ohio State. Yeah. And so hopefully our team buys into the the fact that Purdue just beat them. And I mean we I mean and the team that we were even when we played Purdue isn't the same team that we are now. And I would like our chances against Purdue nowadays and I mean Purdue just took down Ohio State. So you have to buy into the fact that we can beat Ohio State and and then play from there and play with that energy moving forward and hopefully that's what the team buys into you know at 11 a.m um in in the horseshoe come and just take punches and swing right back at them i think it could be hopefully an, catch them off guard a little bit yeah you know? i think i think yeah. i think it can be an interesting game if if you can um you know take those punches and and swing right back you know i think with a yeah. team lacking leadership um kind of unsure where the program's headed even urban meyer getting yeah. asked like are you coming back next year after after a loss um people a lot of people speculating um, I didn't and, understand that rumor. I don't know. I Feinbaum I, broke it like after yeah. like after the first few weeks. Herb Street I just, talked about it. I never really bought that one. And and Herb Street, I mean, I don't know. Urban seemed to pretty shoot that down pretty quick. So I don't. Th- I knows, mean, I but. watched him and he he answered. He said, "Yes, I'm coming back," but like he mumbled yeah. it. I I did not. It was it wasn't that convincing. And from my point of view, Nebraska now has a blueprint to see what Purdue is able to do to beat Ohio State. Yeah. I mean, obviously Ohio State is going to work to patch those holes and For sure. you know <laughs> hopefully try to do things differently so that they that those same exact type of things don't work again. But what Purdue was so good at doing was using Rondell Moore and using their play mar- playmakers on the outside, but specifically Moore. Um, in motion and creating that type of motion they need to get the defense moving the wrong way pre-snap, specifically the secondary. So what happened was that in a a handful of their big plays, specifically their run plays, was that they used Rondell Moore in motion, which would force the safeties to shift. And then they ran the ball towards the side of the field where the motion originally came from, you know, causing that misdirection. 
And what Purdue's offensive line was so good at doing was getting that block on the next level. They always had one guy get that block on the next level on that linebacker, which created those huge holes for Knox to, you know, have have those huge runs and create those plays, which caused, you know, a blowout at the end of the game. So for Nebraska, I mean, that's a game plan that I think we can definitely try to follow. And I'm sure, I'm sure Scott Frost will cook up some of those plays early to see if, if to see if Ohio State can stay disciplined and and stay home and defend against Devon and Zigbo and Maurice Washington and those type of plays. So I think the creativity with Frost and using that motion and using the play action is going to be extremely important. And that was the thing. One well, other thing for, for Ohio State and their defense having to handle our offense is, you know, Spielman got that 200 yards last year and they still just oh, yeah. you know, beat the crap out of us. Right. So, so <laughs> I think we're going to have to be able to do a lot are, of things right. Yeah, I think no. Martinez <laughs> throws a great wrinkle in, like, like you said. I'm um, having Martinez. That's just going to open up so much. We can run. We can throw. We can run with our bat. You know, with our running yeah, backs. Yeah, it, I mean, it gives it's a going lot. to come down to our offensive line. I think. Yeah, if, if Martinez it's gonna... has enough time to throw the ball, where you know his freshman self doesn't kick in and make those mistakes. Because if he has the time to throw, I think he's going to be able to play a fantastic game. Yeah. The issue so. has been against Michigan. He just couldn't do anything. They, the offensive line got destroyed against Michigan, I, yeah. and hopefully that's what we can prevent from happening against the Ohio State's solid front seven. I think, know? like you said, we're just we're a different team though against Michigan. We were a team that gave up once we got oh, to I Michigan, agree. and um, sure. you know Martinez wasn't fully healthy, um, and so I think all those things kind of combining just show. I mean, yeah, it showed where we were there. But I think we definitely have some things to prove um, here, not for our the team to themselves um to the country and i think you know that they, they have they have some great opportunity they have a great opportunity this week to right. uh, to go get some stuff done yeah on the what do you think about the usage between ozigbo and washington in this game who do you think is gonna be more effective yeah i mean i, de I definitely think you have to run ozigbo just with how big ohio state's line is um o i can see that ozigbo got i think like 3.8 yards per carry against uh michigan and so that's pretty decent that's almost four yards and that's gonna yeah. that's gonna get you a first down if you run them three times with them so that's that's what Hopefully. that's what nebraska needs um is first downs yeah. i think long sustaining drives um is gonna be a huge key against ohio state uh, to wear them down throughout the game and uh, yeah as well as the big plays um which i think we'll definitely be able to provide with martinez and spielman and morgan but um, right. I think you're going to have to be able to go down and get points almost every time you play uh, against Ohio State. And I yeah. think Ozigbo is going to give us our best chance to to get key first downs um, and just get us pause like, you know, on a first down to get us, you know, over the chains and make open up the playbook for us on second down. So, yeah, I mean, I fully expect Washington to be the third down guy and passing situations guy. Um, I mean, he has the play playmaking ability and he is obviously fantastic hands out of the backfield. The. That the biggest question for me with Washington is that he's really relied on his athleticism a lot of the time to get to the outside and bounce those plays out, burst through the hole. So will Washington be able to be as effective against the insanely athletic Ohio State defense? I'm not sure about that. So we might have to rely on Ozigbo's power and physicality to get that efficient running game going. Now, I think on the other side, um, I think the formula we need to follow for, for our defense with Purdue is Purdue played to win on the defensive side of the ball. Um, they gambled on third downs you know second down first downs they threw they did bring yeah, pressure they brought pressure yeah. they threw blitzes um they did different creative things to get haskins really uncomfortable and that was that's the difference in the game it was you know purdue could score 49 points most games but so can ohio state the big difference is they they only allowed 20 points and really 13 um against ohio state they and it wasn't until yeah. the end of the I game mean, that they, they was effective at stopping the run. That was the thing. They were able to bring the pressure because they forced Ohio State into obvious passing situations yeah. where they just Ohio State couldn't get the running game going like they normally were able to. So I don't know. I didn't get a good chance to check if that was on the offensive line or if that was more on the you know the backs themselves. Urban Meyer said the blame was kind of on the whole team offensively. It wasn't just on the offensive line or just on the backs. And he said there was a lot of reasons for why it wasn't working against Purdue. So. At the end of the day, we're, we're going to have to do the same thing. And, you know, hopefully we can learn from Purdue in that aspect and what, what works and what doesn't. But yeah. uh, if if Ohio State starts grinding the ball and starts really, you know, busting off 10, 15-yard runs pretty consistently. It's a pretty easy way to and, lose. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to win the game. Yeah. That, that's 100% we will not win the game if Ohio State gets their running game going. So Yeah, I think Purdue was great, about, to watch for. Purdue was great about keeping Ohio State uncomfortable the whole game. 
you know urban meyer is so good usually at getting haskins comfortable getting the offensive line comfortable yeah. get, getting all, everybody comfortable into a good scoring mood but purdue just came out and um really really showed them different looks than what they were ever expecting um that oh, Urban Meyer couldn't game plan against. Uh, they found the holes, and that's what's going to be really important for Nebraska is is keeping um, Ohio State on their toes the whole time, not knowing what we're going to be able to throw at them, so that they're they're confused, and you get that nice look of shock and anger on Urban Meyer's face um, when w they just don't know what's going on, which which is a very rare thing for them. So um, it's going to take a lot of scheme and and time. And I know Urban Meyer is going to do really good things with, with a, an extra week to prepare. We're going to have to be able to really change up what the Huskers are able to do on the defensive side so that we can keep them uncomfortable because he's going to do everything within his power to make the game as easy as he can for Haskins. And we have to combat that in every, every which way. Nebraska hasn't won a game on the road against a ranked team since 2011 against Penn State. So... I mean, it's been a long time coming for Nebraska. There's a lot stacked against the Huskers. The odds right now are it's a 22 and a half point line. So there's a lot going against Nebraska. There's a lot to uh, consider for the Huskers, but there is some opportunity to make some noise even in the horseshoe in Columbus. I, I don't know. I think it's interesting. What do you think for the prediction, CJ? I'm just not sure if we can match the tone of how Ohio State's going to come out. I think that's going to be really tough for us. They're going to come out so, with their just on fire, and the Horseshoe is such a great environment. I think with that being said, we're probably we're going to lose um, by probably three touchdowns. I think it's going to be a good game, oh, you're, you're, you're predicting right around the spread then. Yeah, I think, I think that's probably right where it is. I think it's going to be a good game, though. Like, not... A 21 point game where you're just going to want to turn off the tv i think nebraska is going to fight the whole time i think nebraska is going to have a chance to win this game even with the 21 points if nebraska can find a way to match their intensity um we have a chance but but if not i think it's going to probably be a 21 point game obviously i can agree with that it's not going to be an easy game for the huskers more than likely i think we're going to keep it a little bit closer than that to be honest i i think we're going to be under the spread and it might it might be more like a garbage time situation where we we pile on 10 points in near the end of the fourth quarter or something like that but um i'm i'm gonna go with a 49 to 34 actually um 15 point game it may not feel as close in, during throughout the game but hopefully it's competitive i'm hoping for a, a solid game from the huskers something that we can you know build off of and move forward with in in the last few games of the season and hopefully we can take some positives away from the game and feel like we played a decent game against Ohio State against a really good team in a must-win situation for the Buckeyes, which is my biggest problem with the game. I'd feel a lot better, to be honest, if Purdue didn't beat Ohio State, yeah. which is pretty which is pretty ridiculous to think. But with Ohio State in a situation where they have to win out, it's so hard to pick to pick against that and in the, in the situation that Ohio State's in. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting one, to say the least. We always love to hear what you guys have to say. What do you think is going to happen this game? Um, yeah. over under the spread um, how do you think Nebraska is going to do we can hold up well can we beat uh, the Ohio State juggernaut uh, if Nebraska were to win uh, would Urban Meyer be done after this season like for sure I, I definitely want to hear what you guys have to say on that is he gone regardless um, anyways yeah. yeah we love to hear what you guys have to say uh, like comment favorite and subscribe and as always I'm Caleb that's Josh this has been Backseat Sports and we'll see you next video See ya, Joe. But awesome to see the fans all there. Nebraska put up 659 yards, baby. Just an offensive showcase. Ooh. Martinez was an absolute monster, man. 25 for 29. Absolutely accurate beyond belief.